Tonight as we open up our hearts and our minds to the Word of God, we want to remember that there are many people that desire to be here but cannot. Why? Because as our board says, what's the first word there? Many people are too sick to be here. They're in hospitals, they're in places where they can't get off their IV or their electrocardiogram or they're actually uh, sedated because of some trauma where they have to be taken care of and they can't get out to hear the word of God. They can save their soul and even the words we're going to speak tonight, they'll save the soul and also the physical body. In the New Testament, Jesus said he came that we might have life and life more abundant. But we have some serious things to talk about tonight. We're talking about the diseases of Egypt. We've gone to a text a couple of times in our messages and looked at a scripture where Jesus talks about the diseases of Egypt. And we found out, and we're going to also see again tonight, that these diseases that occurred and happened thousands of years ago in Egypt that God mentions right here with us today. And we want to understand how we can, with the knowledge that we have accrued so far in our nightly meetings, more understanding we'll get tonight, and especially the next three nights. Now, if you if were there any night you should have missed, it should have been tonight. You can't miss tomorrow night. And the night after, the next three nights, now we're going to be very, very biblical, very, very practical. I want to demonstrate. I want you to taste some things. I want you to smell some things. I want you to apply some things. And we're going to be making, myself and the two pastors are going to be making and demonstrating and showing some things that will help you in various areas of your life. And also, with some of the diseases we're going to talk about tonight that are scaring the life out of many people. Some people are more scared of diseases than actually have them. They're scared of cancer, scared of high blood pressure. And well, they should be afraid of catching and contracting these things, but they should have a trust in God that through the principles and the programs that God has revealed in His Word, we can lessen the chance to a tremendous degree and avoid and restore the body from these diseases. Let's open our hearts and minds to the Word of God tonight as we study the topic, the diseases of Egypt. Let's bow our heads just for a word of prayer as we go into our study tonight. Father, again, we've prayed and we've prayed again, but as we bow our heads again tonight, we pray that we would receive the Holy Spirit to guide us through the Word and that the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart tonight would be acceptable in Thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'd like to begin our study tonight in the book of 1 Corinthians. Let's turn there. 1 Corinthians in the New Testament. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, I believe it is. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And we're going to read for those taking notes. And I hope you take notes every night. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, reading verses 1 through 5 and then verse 11 and 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 through 5 and then 11 through 10. You might ask the question, why are we studying anything about Egypt? or the disease of Egypt. Because Paul says in the New Testament, under the influence of the Holy Spirit, that what happened in Egypt has much to do with what's happening to you today. And if you don't understand and are warned by what happened in Egypt, you will likely be just as those Egyptians that suffered under the various diseases of that day, which we see again today. Paul says these things should teach us to understand the Word of God and to follow His Word. Look what it says. 1 Corinthians 10. Let's see if this is a study for New Testament Christians. We're in 1 Corinthians 10, looking at verse 1 through 5 and then 11 and 12. Look at verse 1 through 5. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 1 through 5 says this. It says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant, how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Here Paul is saying, hey, we're all Israel, spiritual otherwise, and all our fathers were back there with Moses. They all came out of Egypt. They all went under the cloud. They all passed through the Red Sea. Amen. Verse 2. They were all baptized under Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. What's that? Okay. Amen. Man, it said verse 4. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. Verse 5 says, But with many of them, God was not well pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. Did everyone find pleasure in God and please God? Hebrews says, by faith we please God. Did everyone please God that came out of Egypt? Did everyone that he saved from bondage make it into Canaan land? Many were overthrown in the wilderness and they had their carcasses, the Bible say, fall in the desert. And why is that even important to us, or even to Paul, or us in these last days? Drop your eyes down to verse 11 and 12. He makes it clear. 
in verse 11 and 12. We're in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 11 and 12. It says, now all these things happen to them for what? What's a sample? Something that shows you something else or something that is very similar or the very same thing. It's a small example of something else. I can take a sample of some cloth. I won't give you the whole, whole reel of cloth. I'll give you a sample so you can see what it's like. And Paul is showing that exactly what happened to ancient Israel is an example of what the last day is going to be like. You say, is that right? Look what it says. It says, all these things, verse 11, were as unto them as samples, and they are written for our admonition to warn us upon whom the end of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he... What is Paul telling us? Many believe that without the study of the Old Testament and the teachings and the warnings, the counsels, the principles, the health principles, they're standing on the shore rock, the rock Christ Jesus, the, even the spiritual rock that followed them. Paul said, if you don't learn from the Old Testament, you're not standing upon this rock, you're getting ready to fall. You must have the admonitions that what happened there, just as we studied with Matthew 24, the Bible says the times of Noah will be seen when Jesus comes again. Times of Lot, Luke says, the times of Lot will be seen again when Jesus comes again. Does anyone doubt that the times of Lot are here? Have you watched the newspaper? Do you know what's happening in the federal courts of law all across this great land and even other countries? The times of Sodom are here again. So why would we not believe that when Paul says in 1 Corinthians that what happened over there in Egypt and the coming out of Israel and the various things connected with that scene are warning us, are teaching us, that we must add, pay attention to them. They're in samples, they're examples unto us that we may not fall, but we may stand in the last days, even stand in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, how does this practically come down to us today? Let's turn to the book of Exodus 15 again, where we went to many times before. In Exodus 15, let's see exactly what happened in Egypt, what happened with Moses and those in the children of Israel that has much to warn us today, especially us in the last days, unless we fall and also are overthrown with the diseases of Egypt. We're in the book of Exodus 15. Exodus 15 and verse 26. Are we in Exodus 15? Are we in verse 26? Let's read the text we're very familiar with. Exodus 15 and 26 is an example for us upon whom the ends of the world are come. Exodus 15 26 says, If thou would hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God and would do that which is right in his sight, and give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. Stop right there. Keep all the statutes, give ear to his commandments and hearken when? When the end of the world has come. If you want to stand and not fall. You say, oh, where did you get that from? Didn't you just read the text we just read? Paul said some of these things are in sample. That's what he said? He said all these things. All these things will be seen again. All these things have spiritual significance that even though they locally and literally happen in ancient Egypt, they're going to be a future spiritual worldwide application in the last days. And you would do well to take heed as unto a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your heart. You must make more knowing that this is a prophetic truth even seen in the history of Egypt and the teachings and the commandments and the statutes that God gave to give health and life and life more abundant have not gone anywhere. The laws of health and laws of nature are still the same. Drinking water is still good. Drinking bleach is always bad. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, getting some nice uh, uh, ocean spray, that misty kind of ocean that comes when, the, when you have a waterfall, that is good. Smoking cigarettes is always bad. You cannot change the laws of nature. You cannot change the laws of hell. You do them and you live. You avoid them, you try and change them, and you suffer the consequence. There's a law of nature called gravity. Anyone want to try and change it? Anyone want to hang upside down here and have us just say, let go? What would happen? Brothers and sisters, the laws of nature are established by the Creator Himself. And He's given us instruction. Now, I always use that example because it seems so bizarre and it seems like people will, they seem, it doesn't make sense to do that. But there are various other, as clear, established laws that we violate with impurity. 
And when we are sick or we have disease or, or trouble, we say, oh, the devil is busy. Oh, that devil, he, he's all, I rebuke the devil. I rebuke the devil in Jesus' name. <sighs> I rebuke him. It doesn't make sense, does it? Cursing the devil and breathing his incense. Making an oblation and making a, 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 a burnt offering on the Satan. Is there any doubt in this modern world that believes that tobacco has any redeeming quality for the body? Why are they spending billions of dollars on advertisement against themselves? Because it's proven that the cigarette is probably one of the... Do you know that they call the cigarette, even though they still sell it, one of the most uh, insidious weapons of mass destruction of our generation? Right up there with the atomic bomb, the A-bomb. Now in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which I visited one time, as a matter of fact. That's another story, I'll tell you that later. They dropped the bomb on those people and hundreds of thousands died in a moment. They said, wow, atomic energy is something that needs to be controlled. It is dangerous. How many have been killed by the cigarette? Tomahawk missile. During the Gulf War, people, oh, Tomahawk missile. Oh my goodness, the Tomahawk missile. The Patriot, oh, the Patriot system. Wow, these things are dangerous. And we're not downplaying the life of individuals in any part of the, or third of the world that have been killed in war. But understand the death toll of the cigarette. It's, it's almost incalculable. They said the filter. I know I'm digressing. I'm not coming back. They said the, the filter was to keep all the bad stuff out and just give the good stuff into your lungs. There was a filter on that. This is better than a cigar because it has a filter. Then they found out the filter was a more effective delivery system for the poison. They found it wasn't just tobacco, it was tobacco, it was embalming fluid. They were killing you and getting ready for the, for the, for the tomb at the same time. Embalming fluid, ammonia, all kind of chemicals so that they, when it burned, it would burn slowly and it would also burn with the chemicals at an even rate to allow the smoke to give a good dose of poison through the filter so it go right to the pleasure center of the brain and to cause addiction even in a greater rate than heroin. They say heroin, but you know some people, black people say heroin. <laughs> if you're from the north, you say heroin. That's in New York, say, we say heroin. Don't we say heroin? <laughs> say heroin, heroin, what's that? Heroin, oh yeah, heroin. <laughs> you know, people have different dialects in the world today. Brothers and sisters, more addictive than most of these hard drugs is smoking cigarettes. And we talk about diet and water drinking, so on and so forth. We can just make a whole night and just deal with the danger of tobacco use. But again, all these things were popularized and even became vogue among the nations from ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt, was, they were smoking in Egypt. Way before Babylon, they were smoking in Egypt. Brothers and sisters, the disease of Egypt did not come by accident. In Exodus 15, 26, God reveals that there were commandments and statutes and principles that he gave. And by hearkening on these things, these things were all wisdom and knowledge and our witness before the world. But again, we're reading on. He said, if, we give, if I give you all these things and you hearken and do them, we're still in Exodus 15 and verse 26, comma, it says, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Here we see the diseases of Egypt. And how were they brought? Because the children of Israel were told, hear my commandments, my statutes, my word, my teachings, my counsels, these things that are the laws of nature, the laws of health. And if you obey these things and keep these things, I will heal. I am the Lord that heals you. I won't bring any of those diseases upon, upon Egypt because Egypt did not hearken unto the Lord. What did Pharaoh say? Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice or let you go? All they asked him was to, you know, go and worship the Lord. They wouldn't do that, much less obey the laws of hell. Now, brothers and sisters, when we look at the story of Egypt, we're seeing here there were certain diseases that Egypt had encountered as a result of disobedience of the laws of God. Now, if you read, and I'm sure you're all Bible students out here, I'm sure you're Bible scholars. You've read Leviticus, you've read Deuteronomy, you've read Numbers. I know you read your Bible every year, don't you? Good Christians, amen. 
But when we look at these books, Deuteronomy, Numbers, Leviticus, and so on, there are in these books, some people say it's hard to, to, to grasp what these books are talking about. There's all these begets and all these different uh, rites and ceremonies. But let's, let's condense it down and distill down what's inside these books for our use today. In these books, for our use in our sermon this night, we want to understand that Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy talks about some things that are very important to what God says as his commandments and his statutes and so on that are found here in Exodus 15, 26. Like what? In those books we just mentioned, along with Genesis, God talks about the fact that it was important, it was essential, it was vital to health, to being clean, the church clean is found in the word of God, spiritually and physically, and to promote godliness and righteousness, to wash your hands, to wash your body, to wash your clothes, to wash your bedding, to wash your personal effects, to wash your cookware, to wash anything that was affected by anything that came out of your body, whether it was a sneeze, it was a tear, it was saliva, no matter what it was, if it was affected by some bodily issue, it was to be washed, it was to be affected by sun, it was to be given some time to make sure no disease came upon it. This is taught in the Bible. It said those things that are dying or dead, if something dies, bury it. If something is, comes out of an animal, animal leaves some waste, bury it. Leave nothing to, to destroy the air or to cause disease to get in the air and spread disease. Bury it. Or if something could not be found to be removed from disease, burn it. Destroy it and then bury it. Get it out of the environment. Get it out of the air. Get it away from people. Quarantine. All that is found in the Bible. Dietetics are talked about inside the Bible. Councils on dietetics. In the first chapter of the Bible, it says, I've given you, behold, I've given you the principles of nutrition, your first best food. And also we found that first best food, according to Revelation 22, 2, and Ezekiel 47 and verse 12, don't hold me to that, I think I'm, I'm correct on those. Those two texts show that those things are not only for healing, but for medicine. God gave medicines, he gave foods, dietetics, all these things were given in the book. The principle of hygiene, principles so complete, so accurate, that in this day, people talk about a measles outbreak. It's not a measles outbreak, it's a hygiene uh, uh, breakdown. The disease only flourishes where there's a lack of hygiene. You can take rats from the sewer in New York right now, and they've said it to be true. Scientists, people with all these letters behind their name, there's bubonic plague in the rats right now. The Black Death, right now. Well, why are people dying of the Black Death? Well, because of street washing, and fire hydrants, and sanitation laws, and bad garbage, and you know, burning garbage, and toothbrushes, and, and diet. All these things are the real reason why disease has gone down. People say, oh, well, vaccine, well, vaccine does give you a certain amount of immunity, but also there's some bad side effects with vaccines too. And when we look at the real issue, there's been more progress through these principles in dietetics and, and using even food as a medicine, vitamin C, all these antibiotics, all these things in food. Using hygiene has accelerated the, the longevity and the quality of life of men more than any pill or injection or vaccine ever created. Brothers and sisters, it is dealing with health and hygiene. And we talk about the diseases of Egypt. God told the people of God all these truths, revealed them all these secrets, gave them all this knowledge and said, if you would hearken to these things, if you would follow these counsels, if you follow the laws of nature, the laws of health that I revealed to you, even though the nation should have it, if you do these things, you won't have the disease that ravage and are ravaging Egypt. For I'm the Lord, through the wisdom I give to you and the instruction I give to you and the warnings, I'm the Lord that heals you. So brothers and sisters, when these things come upon people, it's not God's fault. People say, why would God allow this? God is trying, even through us, through means like this, to disseminate health principles from the Word of God. He's given us the ways of life and life more abundant. And he says, if you don't follow these things, the Z is the natural, to my natural laws, the natural result. That's why the Bible says, among all things, get wisdom. Now, you don't believe that, do you? Do you believe that? No, the Bible shows you. Again, God, you have to put scripture with scripture. People say, oh, why would God bring this upon me? Brothers and sisters, among all things, the Bible says, get wisdom. Wisdom is better than weapons of war, the Bible says. Better than far above rubies. Look at the book of Deuteronomy, quickly. We're almost getting to our practical point. Look at Deuteronomy. I've got to give you some foundation here. In the book of Deuteronomy, it says this. 
Deuteronomy chapter 28. In the 15th chapter of Exodus, we said, God showed us, if you do these things, if you obey, I won't put these diseases upon you. Either receive these things for disobedient, I am the Lord that heals you. But again, in Deuteronomy 28, notice how he comes back and reminds them, if you don't do these things, the natural result in the body, upon the skin, in the gut, in the environment, is disease. And do, are we in the book of Deuteronomy? For those that are taking notes, we're writing down Deuteronomy 28, 15. And then we're going to read verse 58 through 61. For those taking notes, write them down. Excellent text, clear explanations for those who want to share these things with others. When Deuteronomy 20 and verse 15. Notice what it said in Exodus 15, and now come right to Deuteronomy 28 and read verse 15 with me. Deuteronomy 20 and verse 15. In Deuteronomy 20 and verse 15 it says, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I reveal to you or command you this day, that all these cur curses, this is not normal witchcraft now, all these curses shall come upon thee and over what? And overtake thee. Hmm, what does he mean? He said, if we don't follow those things he showed us and revealed to us in Exodus, things for the end of time so we can stand, not fall. All these curses. What, what do you mean by curses? Drop your eyes down to verse 58. He explains it. Go down to verse 58. Look at verse 58. Same chapter. In Deuteronomy 28 and verse 58 through 61 it says this. He repeats it. The same if you have 50, verse 58. Amen. Verse 58 says this. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear the glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God, then the Lord will make thy plagues what? He won't keep it from happening. The Lord will make thy plagues, you know what a plague is? Plague that's wonderful. And the plague of thy seed, our children would have illnesses. Is it God's fault? We have to get wisdom, right? Even great plagues, and of long continuance, and so what? So what are these curses? It's sicknesses, diseases that come as we violate the laws of hell. Oh, I'm going to stay up all night. I'm going to stay up all night and watch, Be I'm going to watch all Beyonce's videos. And then when we're sick, Beyonce's not doing that. Beyonce's a vegan. She's drinking water and she's exercising. And we're over here watching all her videos, getting sick and dying. Oh, I'm such a fan. But sisters, there are certain laws that we have to obey. If we don't sleep, if we don't eat, if we don't rest, these things come upon us. These sore sicknesses. It says in verse 60, Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the disease of Egypt, which thou was afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. What are these curses? The diseases of Egypt. Verse 61. And also every sickness and every plague which is not written in this book of the law, then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. That sounds like God is doing it right. He said, I've given you these commandments. I've given you these warnings. I've explained and taught and showed, revealed to you the secret. Herbal medicine? You have to go to a health food store? It's right here. Dietetics, it's right here. The principles of hygiene, right here. The ideas and principles, even from many technologies, have been found right here. And brothers and sisters, when we understand these things, if we choose to violate, or for God, God help us, if we are just ignorant, we don't know, these, these diseases come. This is why the church is to be a light set upon a hill to shed light, to be a witness, to teach and preach that disease and death and sin may be beaten back and the glory of God and the name of Christ could be exalted. That sickness and death may have its end when the Christian comes up on the scene. The disciples of old in the book of Matthew chapter 10 were sent out to preach, to heal, and to destroy disease. This was the work of the gospel. Why is it not the work of the gospel today? Is the gospel changed? There's no change in the gospel. The gospel is still the same. So when we look at this, brothers and sisters, there are diseases that are rampant in this world that are just the same result of disobeying the laws of God or being ignorant, meaning that we must educate, we must help others, we must share this knowledge. Don't just come here and be blessed and get these handouts. Share the knowledge. Try, call your, your, your girlfriend. Girl, if you were there, that, that little skinny preacher boy, oh, he can talk, he can talk now. I can't keep up. He's talked so fast, I can't keep up with him. But he can, he, you know what he said? If you, and just explain it. People say, what, what, what? He said he was skinny. What, what? Yeah. yeah, he's still down there? Okay, I'll be down there. Tell people about it. 
tell people about it. People will come. People will hear. And again, share the handouts. Share. If you take what you hear and you share it, it gets burned to the mind. The more you share, people say, how do you remember all those scriptures? I'm always talking about them. I talk a lot. I talk about them. I'm always on the phone talking about it. Walking around the house talking about it. Find people talk about it. Always talking about it. And the Holy Spirit is easy to bring it back. And so with spiritual things, so with the natural. If we put the right things in, we get the right results. God says that if we understand these principles and follow them, we'll have health. These curses of Deuteronomy 28, and nothing more than the sicknesses, are the natural result of violating God's laws of health, God's natural laws in the universe. When we understand Christianity, Christianity is being in harmony with God's kingdom and his laws, natural and spiritual. As a matter of fact, look at the book of Proverbs quickly. Proverbs. Look at Proverbs. Proverbs 26. Look at this amazing scripture. And it's very, very germane to our topic tonight. In the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 26 and verse 2, north the word of God. Proverbs 26 and verse 2. You have Psalms and then the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 26 and verse 2. Say amen when you have that. Proverbs 26, 2. It says what? Who, say, who has it? Proverbs 26. What's that? As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse, causeless, shall not come. The curse without a cause shall not come. So what should we be doing? We should be avoiding the causes of disease. We should be intelligent in regard to disease, its causes, its prevention, and cure. Prophet wrote that one time. Brothers, when we look at the Word of God, the curse without causes shall not come. God promises that. If we understand that the commandments and statutes, the principles of health, show us the causes. Show us and admonish us how to avoid certain things and tell us exactly what to do that we may have life and life more abundantly. We can understand how we can avoid the diseases of Egypt. You say, well, what are the diseases of Egypt? So I can even knowing the diseases is not, we're going to get to that. Knowing the disease is not the thing. It's knowing the cause. People say, doctor, what do I have? God says, I don't know. No, I need to know. I just need to know. What you need to know is the cause. He said, well, you, you know, uh, well, you have super silly, acolistic, expialidocious information. I have super silly acting, acting, OT, uh, uh, what? Uh, you go home, what do you have? I have super silly putty, uh, uh. someone asked ask you, I, I have super, it's changed 15, 16 times. You don't know what that is? Do you know what it is? How can that help you? It can help you. Understand the cause will help you. Understand the reasons why it came and being able to have the, the, the medicine, the healing principles, even the lifestyle principles of change that you can start redeeming the time. Making a full, uh, full proof of this new ministry God has given you. If you can remove the cause, the disease won't come. Amen? Amen? If you're ill, if you understand what the cause is, you can remove disease. Just, oh man, I want to I love so much to get off, off this, uh, this, this kaopectate and all this uh, 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 privacy I'm taking. I have, oh, if I could just get off that. It's not getting off that. It's getting off eating six and seven chimichangas at 10 o'clock at night. Amen. It's too much protein. Your body can't digest it. That's why you're having all this. It's too much, especially acidic foods. The Bible says there's a time and a season for everything. Isn't that Bible? That's also hell. The Bible says, the curse causeless shall not come. We have to understand what the causes are. So let's take a step back. We're going to show some of these diseases in Egypt in a moment. We're going to look at that in a moment. Let's take a step back and let's examine God's view. Amen? Because a lot of times we get into difficulties in life because we don't examine and understand God's view. What's God's view of this body that we're in? Because diseases are going to overtake this body unless we understand the principles, the commandments of God, the laws of health and nature. How does God view this body? That helps us understand something. If we understand how God views the body, it starts to unfold to us a cause of disease and also the remedies become also clear when God shows it to us. Let's examine some things. Sure, sure, go with me to the book of 1 Corinthians. I want to write in your notes. Please write down your notes if you're taking notes. I hope you're taking notes. Write down number one. Speaking of God's view of the body, amen? 
Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19. Number one, this body is a temple, a temple of the Holy Spirit. The Bible teaches the body is the what? The temple of the Holy Spirit. We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, reading verse 19 and 20. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 and 20. The body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And a temple means it's sacred. It's holy. And we should treat it that such, such. People would never curse in church. But they curse using this temple. They, they curse with their mouth, don't they? People, if they understood this body as a temple, they would keep it in reverence. And also, they would only do holy things with it and use it in a holy way. And where do you find holy ways? In the Bible. We follow the principles of God. If we really believe it's a temple, 1 Corinthians 6, look what it says here. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19, it says what? You ever see a Bible text start with what? In other words, Paul was amazed. He said, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. What's the price? The blood of Christ, amen? For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are... People say, oh, you're, you know, I'll, Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm born again, I'm blood-bought, and I, I, I'm walking in the Spirit. Well, are you taking care of your body? Well, you know, I, I, you know, I just really, I'm just trusting in what the Spirit can do. Hmm. The Bible says here, glorify God in your body and your spirit. The Bible didn't even say glorify your body, your God in your spirit and your body. He said glorify God in your body and your spirit. Jesus said, if you can't be kind to the brother that you can see, how do you say you love God that you can see? How you say you're going to glorify God who you can't see when he made this body in his own image and you can't glorify, you can't respect it. These things ought not to be, the Bible says. It says, your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God. Some will say, well, well how, how do you glorify God? I, I glorify God by praising and dancing. How do you glorify God? Well, does the Bible say that? How does the Bible say to praise and, and to glorify God? Okay, look at 1 Corinthians again. 1 Corinthians chapter what? Chapter 10, right? And verse 31. Because again, we're talking about how God views the body, right? Number one, God said the body is a temple. And that we should recognize it's not, we're not our own. We're bought with a price and we're to glorify God. Some would say, well, how do you glorify God? What does 1 Corinthians 10, 31 say? It says, whether ye, whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the in other words, whatever you do has a part to play in glory in God. God deals with the entire man, his entire lifestyle. And among the things in this lifestyle, in this way of living that he mentions specifically, is eating and drinking. What we put into this body, the fuel that we put in this body. Would you put whole milk in your gas tank? Why not? Does the body good, doesn't it? How about 2%? Oh, it doesn't? Okay. How about 2% milk? Goat's milk? Okay, what about some soy milk? That's, that's good, right? Why not? It's not made for it, right? It would cause the pistons and all the various... It would, it would mess up the machinery and cause severe... You might have to throw the car out and get another one, right? Just with some milk. Is there a right proper fuel for this body? It doesn't clog the arteries and give you a heart attack or stroke. Doesn't destroy the kidneys, give you stones and destroy your nephron. This is the type of, of eating that does not cause your liver to start to harden up. It's a certain eating and drinking that's going to cause you to have ulcers in your stomach. Is there a certain type of eating and drinking that's going to cause your circulation of blood to become so poor that your circulating to your legs becomes so almost non-existent that your legs, your toes, your, feet, your extremities start to die. And eventually they have to remove this part of your body to let you live. It's, it's amazing to even think of. But many of the things I just mentioned to you come from eating and drinking. The fuel we put in this body. The fuel that we put in to cause us to work and think and have all the pleasures of this life, to think and to experience all the beauties of life grandchildren, children, having uh, them grow up, seeing people do good things, helping others, 
all these good things we experience in this body and our limitless power to praise God through salvation could be checked by what we eat and drink. People say, oh, eating and drinking has nothing to do with the gospel. Well, tell that to Esau. What happened to Esau? Tell that to Eve, right? I said, even tell that to Judas. He said, whoever dips in this sop with me, it is he. He said, uh, is it I? Is it I? What you eat and what you drink has a lot to do with our spiritual nature. And whether we're going to postpone our funeral or move it up very, very quickly. We have to understand that the cause is not going to come without us. Uh, sorry, the curse is not going to come without causes. In 1 Corinthians it says, our eating and drinking and how we put these things in our body and all that we do is how we glorify this body temple, this temple of the Holy Spirit. We can't say, oh, well, what we eat is not, it's all about the Spirit. Well, again, the Spirit says in 1 Corinthians that eating and drinking will affect your connection with God. People say, oh, well, the gospel is not eating and drinking. It's not eating and drinking. It's perceiving the Word. And we perceive the Word better if we eat and drink better. You say, well, our eating has nothing to do. Okay. I want you to read Genesis 1-1. Okay. Genesis, in the beginning, God was going to do Okay, I understand that. Okay. You see these, slit, these 17 slip malt liquor bulls I have right here? I want you to drink all 16 of these slip malt liquor bulls. Just drink it. Just blow it. Now Genesis 1, in the, in the, it, it's just drinking, right? How does that drinking affect your ability to read and understand the Word of God? And if you can't read and understand it, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Is it affecting your faith? Can you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ without perceptive powers? Believing is the power of the mind. What we eat and drink affects our mind, how we think. And in this world that we're living in, one of the most, uh, most widest fields of disease that are, are creeping up now is brain disease and Alzheimer's and dementia and so on. These things are accelerating. Let this mind be in you, which also in Christ Jesus. And with all due diligence, keep your heart or your mind. The Bible says that we eat and drink to the glory of God. And what we eat and drink can affect how we perceive or understand. What we put in this body affects how we understand or perceive or believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And in that sense, it becomes an issue of salvation or not. If I'm going to drink the, all this and I can't really believe and abide in Christ, am I being saved or lost by this? Is it, is it, is it of the flesh or is it of the spirit? We have to really think about what we put in our body and what it does to us. As a matter of fact, the Bible not only says that we are the temple of God, it says that our bodies are God's acceptable sacrifice. In the Old Testament, an acceptable sacrifice was a bullock, a goat, lamb, turtle dove, pigeon. These things were acceptable sacrifices as they were without disease and so on. But in the New Testament, what's an acceptable sacrifice unto God? Oh, Where's that? In Romans 12, right? Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. Let's turn there. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. Romans 12. In Romans 12, verse 1 and 2, it says this. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. Say amen when you have that. We're in Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. Romans, the 12th chapter, you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts, and then Romans. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2 says, I beseech you. That means I'm begging you, Paul says. Therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, because it's only His mercy that we're hearing these things, and we have opportunity to receive the gospel in its practical, literal, or even spiritual sense. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. People say, oh, I'm, I present the body of Christ. If you have faith to receive spiritual blessings, yes, present the body of Christ. But Paul says that God wants you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. And your bodies, could you bring a dead lamb to the, to the altar in the Old Testament? Dragging it. Well, I killed it on the way, but here it is. No. It had to be in perfect health, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. In the Old Testament, bulls, go bullocks, goats, and so on. But the, body says, the Bible says that our bodies in the New Testament are the acceptable sacrifice. And it is to be living, 
holy, acceptable unto God. And this is your reasonable service. It's the grace of God that He accepts any of us because we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But knowing that, we should not say, well, you know, God's going to accept me as I am. He's accepting you that He can redeem you, can restore you, can sanctify you, can bless you, can add peace unto you. Not to keep you where you are or let you slide away. He wants to enhance and to, and, and to, uh, to inhabit this temple of the Holy Spirit. So, He says, present this body a living sacrifice. We should be studying and understanding how we can in prayer, in service, in our life, in our witness, grow up in a greater stature to Christ, becoming more and more like Him, desiring to and obeying the Word in things natural and spiritual. That way, we're giving this body to God a living sacrifice. And with more energy, more strength of mind and body, we can do more service for God. It says, verse 2, And be not conformed to this world, and be not transformed, but, sorry, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What does God say? Not just the mind and just believing on Christ and the mind being transformed, the body as a living sacrifice given to God and this transformed mind together. That experience, this type of Christianity proves what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Christ-like work for the body and Christ-like work for the spirit. This together shows what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. God would that thou would prosper. 3 John 2, that thou would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Are you sick? The Bible says, call the elders. Let him pray. But again, more than that, let him understand these principles because the curse called it shall not come. Brothers and sisters, there's a greater ministry than we've really understood many times as Christians. A ministry for the body as well as for the soul. A spiritual and practical ministry that Jesus gave to the disciples and the disciples gave to others until the great apostasy of the dark ages. Here we are in a time of reformation and revival and God in these last days is bringing his everlasting gospel back and these truths back that people may in the last days stand and not fall. That we can understand that according to the word of God, this body is God's acceptable sacrifice. He wants a living sacrifice. He would that you would live and have life more abundant. He wants you to know this body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. He wants to dwell in you. And you must glorify this body knowing it's not your own. With this understanding, we can understand why the Jews, the Hebrews, God's people throughout all time understood and were given principles by which they can keep their bodies and their homes and their environments in health because it was a witness unto Jehovah in this healthful, holy, happy environment. An environment outside the body, an environment inside the body. An environment of health and life and hope outside, an environment inside. Which brings us, brothers and sisters, which brings us to our third idea about how God views the body. Look at this last one and we're going to go to the board. Look at the book of Leviticus. Leviticus. Not only does God sees the body of the temple and the body as an acceptable sacrifice in the Lord, but the life of the body, the life of the flesh, he says, is in the blood. Look what it says in the book of Leviticus. Leviticus 17. And this is key to us. Leviticus 17. We have Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, the 17th chapter. And look at verse 11. Leviticus 17 and verse 11. We're going to have God views the body to understand the causes of disease. In Leviticus 17 and verse 11 it says this. It says, for the life of the flesh. Are we there? Amen. For the life of the flesh is where? In the blood. Stop there. Stop there for a moment. The life of the flesh is where? How do we know how well this body is or this flesh is? You go to the hospital and take a blood sample. Right? First time you go inside they put a blood pressure and they check your blood pressure, right? They, sometimes they even look at your, your leg and they'll see if you've got good circulation of blood. They'll listen to your heart. All they're looking at is to see how the body's running. And most of the time they're looking at what is the circulation of the blood, the function of the heart which circulates the blood, and also the constituents of the blood because science, medicine knows the life of the flesh is in the blood. What disease you may have? They check the blood. God said it here thousands of years ago. 
And if we understand it comes right back to the blood, we can understand exactly how disease many times comes. Back on our board here, we have a, sh a, a sheet that says the disease of Egypt. And you see a man here standing and it says man, temple of the Holy Spirit. Did we find that in 1 Corinthians? Temple of the Holy Spirit. But not only is it a temple of the Holy Spirit, he is a temple filled with blood. And the life of the flesh is what? In the blood. And the life of the flesh is in the blood. What is that life that's in the blood? What's that light in the blood? Well, let's look at the text quickly. In the book of Deuteronomy. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 20. The life is in the blood. Hmm. In the book of Deuteronomy, you have Leviticus and then Numbers and then Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 20. Deuteronomy 20. And look at verse 19. Notice this text dealing with warfare. And we are in a warfare for our lives even right now in 2019. So this applies to us. In Deuteronomy 20 verse 19 it says this. Deuteronomy 20, 19 says, When thou shalt besiege, that means attack, a city a long time, in making war against it, to take it, thou shalt not destroy the trees thereof by forcing an axe against them. For thou mayest eat of them, and thou shalt not cut them down, for the tree of the field is man's life. To employ him in the battle, or in the seed. The tree of the field is what? The life of the flesh is in the blood. And it then says the tree of the field is man's life. Now let's see if you remember well our divine equation when we studied the foundation of hell. In our first two nights, we understood that the tree supplies something. The, the tree gives off a gas called what? It gives off a gas called oxygen, or gives off a chemical called oxygen. And sorry, it gives off a, yeah, a gas called oxygen and it takes in one called carbon dioxide. It purifies the air and gives off oxygen. The tree is full of oxygen. Its roots in the ground take in two things. It takes in water and also nutrients. Air, water, and nutrients are obtained through the tree in the form of apples, oranges, peaches, plums, avocados, whatever it may be, as well as the tree breathes out this oxygen, the very things that are in the blood as life come from the tree. Because in our blood, in healthy blood, is an abundance of oxygen, certain and uh, accurate amount of hydration or water, and also nutrients. If you lack air, water, or nutrients in the blood, what's happened to the tissues or the flesh? It's dying. Or it's disease. Sickness and disease come before death, right? If you don't have the right nutrition, you have nutritional deficiencies. Your immune system will go down. You start to have various situations in your body where your body will start to shut down because you're not getting the nutrients you need. People will not drink enough water or get enough hydration. Or they're drinking things that are direct and they're pushing the fluids out of their body. And because of that, they're having diseases because they're not getting the right water into the blood. The air, the water, and the nutrients must get into the blood. Otherwise, it's a perfect environment for disease to come in and take over. Disease are, are able to really take over if you're dehydrated. You know one of the main causes of disease, or sorry, of death of the elderly? Even cancer patients, even AIDS patients, dehydration. Many people with AIDS die of diseases that their body can't fight because they have no immune system. But many times people are so dehydrated, they can't hold on the fluids. It's essential to have air, water, oxygen, water, and nutrients. If the blood can't break down the right type of foods, or not getting the right type of foods, and can't give and feed the cells of the body, air, water, nutrients, and then turn around and take poisons out of the body and remove those things, then the body starts to break down and disease starts to increase in various parts of the body. And they will manifest themselves in various ways. And many times, if we don't understand that the tree, and when I say the tree, I'm talking about Genesis 129, Genesis 3.18. These foods 
are made or found on the tree. These are the first best food of man, the best fuel for the body, and these fuels are also medicines that come into the body, providing air, water, and nutrients, destroying disease and building up the body. The lack of them break down disease and invite, sorry, break down the body and invite disease. And these are many times the causes that bring disease upon them. The curse caused it shall not come. And when we look at these principles, brothers and sisters, we understand that the diseases of Egypt, as found in the Old Testament, are the same disease that we see in our world today. And if we understood the importance of eating, as we said, and having natural remedies, fresh fruits and vegetables, nuts, seeds, grains, legumes, all these various things that we generally don't eat a lot of, or avoiding a lot of the foods with faces and mothers and children. If we avoid some of those foods and push those things aside, we're gonna find the more health we're gonna get is by eating those things that come from a tree, because Deuteronomy told us, Deuteronomy 20 and verse 19, the tree of the field is man's life to employ him in this warfare called life upon the earth. Air, water, and nutrients is found in tree food, in plant food, and it needs to get into our blood. The process of digestion does that. But guess what? Having a nice fruit basket on your table at home does not get in your blood. Some of you at home, you come inside and say, oh, that's a wonderful fruit basket, uh, Sister, Sister Smith. Oh, thank you so much. You can take it. Uh, I thought this was for you. Oh, no, no. Oh no, I can't eat that. That stuff makes me sick. Fruits and vegetables? Oh yeah, I can't, I can't touch that. It makes me itch. Ooh, I can't, I can't take that. Ding! But this, but this, this microwave dinner, it does me, you know, got corn here and, and pot roast. This does not cause it to have any itching, but, but oh, oh, brothers and sisters, there is many types of food that we can eat. But do you know that fruits, nuts, grains, seeds, those foods have virtually no disease connected with them. Now we know that algaes are becoming very popular nowadays and people are having different algae, different things. We know that algaes exist, but that's minor compared to some of these diseases that we see today. Apples, oranges, peaches, plums, seeds, uh, nuts, these things generally don't have diseases connected with them. You, know, you have little itching, little algaes, okay, fine. But I'm talking about people are getting cancer, diabetes, heart attack, stroke, uh, 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 aneurysms from what they're eating. These foods, these nutrients, the water, air, have no side effects. Many of the diseases, as we go to Deuteronomy, look at the disease now. In Deuteronomy, look at the disease in verse chapter 28. Look at the diseases that came upon the Egyptians. And let's see if we see them today. And as we close in our last few minutes, let's see if we can understand how these diseases come based upon our understanding here and understand how we can avoid them. So as we come tomorrow, and we come Wednesday and Thursday, and I show you and demonstrate and show you the natural medicines, the plans and programs to avoid these diseases and to remove them, it'll all make sense. I'm gonna show you something without making sense. You have to understand the reason why, right? In Deuteronomy 28 and verse, let's start here in verse 21. In verse 15 it says, if you don't obey the commandment statutes, the curses will come upon you, right? Look at Deuteronomy chapter 28, Deuteronomy 28 and verse 21. Say me when you have that. What are the diseases of Egypt? It says here, in verse 21, the Lord said, the Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee. What's pestilence? Diseases, sicknesses. Because of disobeying God's warnings and instructions and teachings and revelations of what the natural and health laws are, Pestilence shall cleave unto thee until he has consumed thee off the land whither thou goest to possess it. As they went to the Canaan land, the earth would spit them out and their own bodies, their own environments would not be helpful because they weren't following God's word. Drop your eyes down. Let's see exactly what he's talking about. Look at verse 22. It says, the Lord shall smite thee with a what? What's consumption? It's tuberculosis. Right in the Bible. Is tuberculosis on the rise? I don't know about up here, but I know in Florida it's on the rise. I know in New York it's on the rise. People are getting tuber I haven't heard of tuber tuberculosis in, in 30 years. We're well, going to learn about it now. It's on the rise. Consumption with a fever, inflammation, 
You know one of the greatest problems people have today is inflammation? Rheumatoid arthritis is, is inflammation. Sciatica, that's inflammation. Inflammation or inflammatory related disease. And some, many of the autoimmune diseases people have are showing the symptoms in inflammation, swelling. It's an extreme burning. That could be almost anywhere. As I says, blasting, mildew. That shall pursue them to thy parents. That's even fungal infections, bacterial infections. That's seen all here in the language here. Drop your eyes down to verse 27. The Lord shall smite thee with the botch of Egypt. Then you go back to your, your uh, concordance and Bible dictionary and look on the botch of Egypt. You know what it'll say? It'll say cancerous tumors. Right? Go, go, look at verse 27, go into your concordance, go into your Bible dictionary, and it'll say the botch of Egypt are various tumors generally of a cancerous nature. Right here in the Bible. Are bacterial infections on the rise? MRSA and all these various things? These things were in Egypt. How about inflammation? It was in Egypt. Consumption, tuberculosis, it was in Egypt. Cancer, it was in Egypt. Emer you know what emeralds are? Hemorrhoids. We're in Egypt. Hemorrhoids are caused by lack of fiber in the diet. Lack of fiber. People suffering with, with, with hemorrhoids, they can't even come to church because they can't sit down. And if they understood how to, number one, eat a high fiber diet to avoid straining at the stool, they wouldn't break blood vessels in their rectum, causing these problems. And there's sort of simple ways to eliminate and to remove the swelling in these things. As a matter of fact, we talked about it the other day. We're talking about Isaiah and the fig. I remember, can I, can I digress for a second? What time are we at? What time is it there? 8.16? Oh, I got another hour. Oh, I'm good, I'm good. I, I promise, 10 minutes, we were, finished. we were finished, 10 minutes. We were doing a crusade in Sacramento, California. This is, this is 19 years ago. I was young back then, I had black hair, jet black. Oh, good, good old days. Well, one of the students had come, because uh, we had a number of students, we had a team of like maybe 30 people. Pastor Tinsley, you may not know Pastor Tinsley, who I work with a lot, he was with me there. We were all young, we were out there doing the work, we were traveling, and we were doing a meeting in Sacramento, California. We did like a, I think a six or eight week meeting, and we were doing Bible work, door-to-door -door work, going and getting people out to evangelistic meetings there in Sacramento. So, yeah, a lot of walking. Someone had come from home, and uh, when we would have our meals, they didn't eat any salad, you know, they didn't like any brown rice, they just wanted to eat, you know, something that they thought tastes good, maybe some ice cream. They never ate well. Well, lo and behold, you know, people knew that I was doing health talks, I would give health talks during the meetings, stuff like that, and I was getting ready to do something during the main meeting. So the brother came to me one night and said, you know, uh, I need to talk to you. I said, you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, need, I, I need to talk to you. I said, okay, I'm, I'm here. Now I need to talk to you out here. So we get down, walked out, walked out in the church, you know, back behind the baptismal pool, you know. I said, this brother's trying to beat me up. It's, it's kind of dark, by the way. What are we doing? He said, man, I have, I have a problem. I said, uh, what's the problem? He said, I have uh, something going on. He said, what's going on? Well, yeah, I have something going on down there. I said, man, if you don't stop talking, so, uh, what, are you, I can't, what are you talking about? I have hemorrhoids. You said, you have hemorrhoids? I said, shh, shh, don't tell people, shh, I have hemorrhoids. I said, that's all you had to say. He said, just, I'll, I'll, just, I'll be with you in a second. And I went to the kitchen, because they had a little pantry, went in the kitchen, and they had all these dried fruits, raisins, stuff like that, and they actually had figs there. Put some water on to boil, boil some water. When the water boiled, I took two figs, drop them in the water, turn the fire off, put it aside. After five or six minutes, the fig drinks in all that hot water and it rehydrates. Because when it's dried, it really can't absorb and pull out inflammation. You have to put the water back in it to revive it. So you put it in the hot water, it plumps up, you cut it open and you let it cool because it's full of boiling water. You can't put that on someone's skin. Cut it open, leave it open, cover it, and let it cool to a temperature that's good to put on the skin. Basically, I said, okay, meet me in the bathroom. Went in the bathroom, I said, hey, you know, 
If we weren't brothers before, we're, we're going to be brothers now. <laughs> Drop them. <laughs> you know? And uh, I got some tape and cut that, that thing was cut open, and I put it on the hemorrhoid and taped it ever so carefully, you know. You know? And told him, I said, okay, you need to go and go right to bed, you know. I made sure no one was there, and he walked out there, you know. I can't. <laughs> the funny thing is, and I'm not, you know, it, it, it's humorous looking back on it. He was saying, oh, I can't. I don't know how to lie down. And someone walked in, you know, because they were always these young guys. He said, oh, I'll, I'll help you. Pushed him in his chest. And he, oh! <laughs> He fell down. I just covered him with a blanket. I said, good night. You know, in the middle of the night, he got up and the inflammation was basically half gone by the middle of the night. In like five hours, the, 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 the fig had reduced the size of the, tumor, the, the uh, hemorrhoid, I mean, two thirds of the way. You know, basically he was up to get up and walk around. He felt good, you know. I said, okay, let's went, boil some more water put an application on, by the morning, he was fine. That's overnight. Two applications of fig. Where people suffer with this stuff for weeks. But I had a conversation with him, I told him, I said, hey, you know, this is great. Oh yeah, it's great, man, thank you, thank you so much. But again, the reason why is you need to get more fiber in your diet. If you don't get fiber in your diet, if you're straining the stool, you're gonna get hemorrhoids. As, as a matter of fact, because I, I was in the Air Force for a number of years when I was younger. And I found out when I was in the Air Force that many pilots that fly fighter jets get hemorrhoids, regardless of the diet. Because of the G-forces when they're going down through these various turns and rolls, when it goes through the turns and rolls, they have to actually squeeze so tight to kind of keep themselves from passing out and so on. They're, it's such a strain on their body that they actually get hemorrhoids from the stress upon their body. Didn't know that until I got in the Air Force. But again, that stress, that, 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 that straining that they do, whether it be, uh, can you imagine that something that a fighter jet, Mach 6, Mach 7, would cause these things, but some people are getting that on their toilet bowl from lack of fiber, not eating vegetables, not eating salad, not eating fruit, not eating uh, brown rice or things with roughage, oats and stuff like that. You need fiber and roughage. The Egyptians had these emeralds because they had a rich taste. Before there was France, there was Egypt. Egypt was a culinary center of the world. And brothers and sisters, here we are again at the end of time. And in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, it talks about consumption. It talks about the botch of Egypt. It goes on down and it says, verse 27, it says, the scab and the itch, that's in verse 27, which thou canst be healed. Another allusion to maybe infection, maybe some type of allergy, maybe even skin diseases. Drop down to verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. That's insanity. You say, oh, insanity has nothing to do with diet. They're finding now that depression is very, very closely linked to dietary issues. They found that people with uh, depression, by taking niacin, just niacin, they're able to feel better and have less, people that have chronic depression, niacin helps them. And you know what's very good behind niacin? Cashews. Now, I'm going to say that people be going, you know, eating a whole can of planters, you know, watching, t no, no. A few, maybe a half a handful of, 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 of cashews has enough niacin to keep your niacin levels good. But people with depression, they've done studies and found that by taking niacin, many people, not all, but many people are able to avoid uh, the feelings of gloom and so on by taking the right nutrition. It says madness, blindness. Astonishment of heart. What's the number one cause of blindness in Western society? Diabetes. diabetes. Complications of diabetes. Diabetic retinopathy. Number one cause of blindness in Western society. Not, you know, infectious disease in the third world. In Western society, in the so-called advanced first world, complications of diabetes is the number one cause of blindness. Diabetic retinopathy. It says right here, Blindness, astonishment of heart, heart issues. Number one cause of disease, heart disease, number one. And soon to be overtaken, they say, by cancer now. Heart disease is caused by diet. That's why the little Quaker old box said, that little Quaker old box had that big heart on there. There's no uh, heart medicine inside there. 
Why would Quaker oats have anything to do with the heart? Because when you have the fiber in the oats, when you introduce fiber in the body, the body says, aha, this is, God has programmed uh, this body to respond to fiber. Hmm. Now this fiber is here, I can now remove some of this uh, adipose tissue, some of the fat that's in the body stored here, the body stored there, and also that's even in the arteries, and start cleaning this stuff up. And getting it out of the body, because I have some place to put it. Your body takes, when you have fiber, for instance, let's say you have oats. Oats has B vitamins and protein inside there, has all these good carbohydrates, it's wonderful food, you should eat it a lot. But the chewing mechanism, when you chew your food, I hope you chew your food. Do you chew your food? Or do you chop and swallow, as my grandma said? You chop and swallow, do you, do you, you need to chew. Chewing is digestion. The first part of digestion is mechanical digestion. By chewing, mechanical digestion. Which is what good teeth you have. Right? Saliva, hydrochloric acid, is chemical digestion. Bile also for the fats. Mechanical digestion, chemical digestion. By these two types of digestion, the body is able to separate the juices, the oils, the liquids, the nutrients from the fiber. The fiber is called cellulose. It has no nutritional benefit, but it has tremendous benefit to the body. Why? Because it's the medium, the transport system to bring protein, to bring carbohydrate, to bring nutrients into the body. But when you digest or separate, di means two, separate the nutrients, the oils, the fats, and so on from the cellulose, the body absorbs and utilizes and converts these nutrients and so on into blood to feed the cells, feed the whole body. And the cellulose, the body now takes the cellulose and injects things it wants to get rid of to remove it from the body. Ammonias and poisons and fats. Your body can easily keep a good weight if you eat a high fiber diet because the body will remove and take the fat and inject it into the cellulose with poisons and it'll come out as a bowel movement. And because there's a lot of cellulose, you have regular bowel movements. But if you do not eat fiber, if you don't have a high fiber diet, then the foods you're taking generally are injecting protein into your system too quickly. Now you have allergies. You say, how do eating too much protein get Well, what does the immune system attack? Proteins. The immune system is geared to attack proteins. And it could be a virus, or it could be, you know, too much of a hamburger. It doesn't make any difference to the immune system. If you have too much protein, it's going to have a heightened immune response. And when and hay, hay fever season comes around, you'll be sneezing and snotting like everybody else because you have a hypersensitivity to protein. But if you had the right amount of protein connected with fiber, it would lessen that. If you had fiber with your sugars, your carbohydrates, People say, oh, I can't eat bread because too much carbs. You need complex carbohydrates. Your body runs off of it. You need your brain, your body runs off of glucose. It comes from carbohydrates. And you need it in its whole form. Because the cellulose is a medium to transport that sugar into your body. Chew, 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 chew. Mix it with saliva. Swallow. Hydrochloric acid. Chew, chew, chew. Hydrochloric acid mainly is for the protein. Goes over the jejunum in the small intestine. Now you have some bile inside there, move the fat, body takes it up. I mean, this is all basic uh, uh, applied physiology and nutrition and dietetics. We all know that. I believe we do. When you understand the importance of cellulose or fiber, you know that one of the main reasons why people have problems is because they're taking all these sugars, all these, these, these uh, free foods that have no cellulose and your body cannot take this rush of sugar or rush of all of these foods that are mixed and slowed down by cellulose. For instance, corn oil, uh, lard, uh, butter, all these things are what are called free oils. You have oil in olives, you have oil in avocado, you have oil in corn, all these things have oil in them, but wrapped in cellulose, it would be very hard to eat the amount of corn that you use, the corn oil you fry your food with. It would be very hard for you to eat the amount of olive that you use to make olive oil. And it's made that way so that you would not get too much and cause diseases. Also, it gives you a, a small time release kind of system in the body where you can use a small amount of body chemicals to break down. 
small amount of insulin is needed to break down these things and allow these glucose cells to get into the body cells. But if you don't have fiber, it rushes inside and the body can't deal with it. People say, oh, well, you know, I gotta watch out for my sugar because I don't wanna get diabetes. Diabetes is caused by fat, eating too much fat. Animal fat especially, but even, you know, natural fat, too much can go to diabetes. I know a lot of people that don't eat any animal fat and they have diabetes, why? Because too much fat affects the system and also cause the cells, your skin cells, your kidney cells, all these cells need to be fed to not take in the glucose. And if you're not taking it in, where's it gonna stay? In the blood. And if there's too much glucose in the blood, then you have high blood sugar. Brothers and sisters, I've gone to islands in the, in the Pacific where people don't eat hardly any animal fat. Eat avocado and stuff like that. Hardly any animal fat, just a little bit of fish. And they drink soda like it is uh, rainwater. No, no diabetes though. Now, they don't have any teeth in their mouth, but no diabetes. Why? Because they don't have the animal fat. The fat, the fat is the trigger. When I was in Japan, they found years ago when they first started to uh, really have a problem with heart disease, the Japanese used to have to fly in cadavers from the mainland because they had no one with coronary artery disease. They couldn't find enough people, or hardly any people, that had heart disease to actually look at and see and examine a body with plaque in the arteries because the Japanese diet was so, so devoid of large animal fat. It was very little fish and mostly vegetables. They had to get Americans and people from Germany to actually see what it was like. But not anymore. When I was in Japan 20 or 30 years ago, you, KFC was everywhere. Japanese started to became stronger, stronger, they started to look more like Americans because the diet had changed, but also they started having more disease. The Japanese, just like many people in various parts of the world, are chain smokers. They smoke cigarettes like it was going out of style. But for years, they never had lung cancer. I mean, people would smoke packs and packs, six and eight packs a day, never get lung cancer. But when KFC came over, when McDonald's came over, that good old American food, that good old American fat, Meat and potatoes, right? All of a sudden, they started getting lung cancer. Why? Because the animal fat. It, the cancer started going. The fat is the trigger. They used to smoke cigarettes like it was going out of style, but now animal fat caused all these things. So diabetes? Yeah, you need to watch what you eat as far as sugar because that's going to affect your immune system. But the real thing is fats. You don't find anyone that has diabetes that's just drinking soda just eating sweets. They're on a high fat diet. They're eating a lot of animal products, a lot of butter, a lot of fried foods. This is why people have diabetes to a great degree. And if they would increase the amount of fiber they had, eat some brown rice, eat some oats, avoid a lot of the fried food, get those things out and eat more fruits, more vegetables, more legumes and beans and nuts, and avoid the animal fat. Avoid even frying things. By this, they'll find that their diabetes, this thing they can't seem to get rid of, will start to reverse. You say, oh, that, that's impossible. Is it impossible? Why is it you can go to Cornell University right now and pay fifteen, twenty thousand dollars and get it done with some doctors? You can go right now to great universities of this country and get for twenty thousand dollars, they'll reverse your diabetes, and don't all run out because it's a two-year waiting list. So get in line. See, we over here. Oh, I need to get me some oh, some medication. People with money are now getting this stuff reversed, and they're changing their diet. They say, I would rather change my diet than 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 get a, a, a injection. Amen. Knowledge and all that getting, get understanding, brothers and sisters. People are doing it and paying twenty thousand dollars to learn. I'm teaching you here how to do it for free. I'm showing you why for free. Brothers and sisters, if we understand the cause, fiber, 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 if you would eat more fiber food, if you eat Genesis 1 29, Genesis 3 18, you're going to find that the nutrients you need connected with water, fresh air, will make your blood able to be a medium of healing. You're going to find that cancer is going to be finding a hard, a hard road to hoe, as it were, to live in your body if you make the internal environment hard for them to live in because of fiber, because of antioxidants, because of the things you put inside there. Let's even talk about water. 
You ever heard of high blood pressure? Why do people have high blood pressure? Let's, let's simplify it. You have in your body all these veins, all these arteries, all these capillaries, right? Some of the blood passageways in your body are smaller than a hair. You know what a hair is? Bing! Smaller than that. If you took a straw and drank some water, you know, you say, hmm, that water's good. Then you get a, a milkshake and you at the that took like a little bit hard because it's just, you know, it's thick, right? Water, milkshake. Thick, very watery. The one that is very watery goes to the straw very quickly and you need to put less pressure to get it through. The one that's thick, you have to put more pressure to get it through. When you don't drink water and you're dehydrated and your body's trying to hold on to water and various organs to keep them running, what happens to the viscosity and the thickness of your blood? It starts to get very, very thick. And because of that alone, you will need more pressure to pump it through the blood, causing your blood pressure to be elevated. Stress. When you get under stress and something is bothering you or you're worrying, your blood vessels dilate. Is it easier to drink a milkshake with a straw this big or a straw this big? Because with this one, it takes less pressure, right? But if your blood vessels constrict, you need, it takes more pressure to get them through. High blood pressure. If you eat a high fat diet, and your, diet, your blood is full of all that, that whole milk and cheese and butter and stuff like that, that's clogging your arteries, how much pressure does it take to push the blood through when it's so thick? Again, high blood pressure. The disease of Egypt are easy. The curse caused this shall not come. We need to drink some water, amen? We need to remove some things from our plate and replace them with some things better so that we can avoid high blood pressure. We can avoid or reverse high blood pressure. We can avoid or reverse diabetes. We can make our body a place where cancer can't live rent free. You didn't get that. We can reverse diseases by putting in our body what we need. So brothers and sisters, as we look at all these ways, and you can look at verse 35, verse 35 talks about pain in the joints, arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, all these things are found, that's verse 35, you have pain in your joints. All these things are seen in Deuteronomy. The disease of Egypt, heart disease, infectious disease, bacterial infections, arthritis, Cancer, all these circulatory diseases like hemorrhoids, diabetes, all these things are seen in the book of Deuteronomy. They're the disease of Egypt and are they here today? Are they here today? That God say the commandments and statutes that he has given would keep you from getting those diseases because he's the God that heals us. Then can we use and understand principles of dietetics, hygiene, medicine, uh, 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 recovery from the Bible because the principles are still in here. Yes. Brothers and sisters, I've gone all over this country preaching and talking about this for over 20 years. And I've seen so many people with various ailments, been recovered, got better, gotten off medication, given up all, been able to walk because of the healing power in God and things he's created that he's put life-giving healing properties into. That's why tomorrow and Wednesday and Thursday, we're going to remove this pulpit out and we're going to let you taste some things and put some things on and smell some things and see how we can not only with food, but also with certain natural remedies, start to understand how to eat different that we can avoid cancer, diabetes, stroke, heart, blood pressure, all these kinds of things. We can understand some remedies using the natural foods that we have everywhere in the store, not expensive medicines, to get antioxidants, to get antibacterials, antifungals, to get things that will cause us to have better immune system, better skin, avoid, or maybe turn away rashes. I have something that you can get in the store that will, I, I shouldn't get it, I, I shouldn't get this. I need to call my wife and see if I can give this away. Can I call my wife and ask if I can give this away? My wife has a tremendous anti-rash cream. And she didn't make it herself, God made it. Our little baby, both Raquel and William, 
have never had a rash more than a couple hours. Anytime they've gotten a little rash, she puts this little cream on, <laughs> knocks it off. Should I tell you what it is? It's coconut oil. Coconut oil. Pure coconut oil. Wipe it on a, on a rash. Unless you have an alert, alert reaction to it, you put on a little rash, it will remove the rash within a matter of hours, if not, you know, a short period of time. Tremendous ability to fight skin diseases. The oil of a coconut. Brothers and sisters, there are some simple things that we can use that can cause and remove. You don't have to get all these different chemicals and creams. If you need to get something that's, that's medical, hey, do what you need to do to get where you need to go. But I want to show you next three days, along with many more scriptures, many more handouts, a way that you can have a, uh, a plan, a program, even some recipes, both for food and remedies, and also therapies where you can have better health. Is that all right? You don't mind if I do that, do you? You don't mind if I move this pulpit out? I'm not going to disrespect the sanctuary, but I'm going to show you that God can show you with natural, simple ways, and just with like a, a blender. A couple knives. Uh, we'll even bring a juicer here. Let you taste some juice. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is the ways of death. But there is a way that's right in the Lord's sight, and the ways thereof are life, and life more abundant. May God bless you. Before we close, I have a handout for everybody. Uh, our pastors, can you uh, pass out those handouts, brothers? I'm going to have these young preachers up here helping me on tomorrow with my discussion in the next couple of days. This is called the restoration plan. It's eight, is it eight? It's seven principles that you can start tonight to start getting better, to start avoiding the diseases of Egypt. It's talking about water, prayer, diet, fasting. It explains how to do some of these things so that you can start tonight. And if you have friends and family, share it with them. It's going to prepare you for tomorrow. And tomorrow you need to bring a friend. Bring what? Oh, you said that so time. Bring a friend. You have friends. Bring a friend. Bring your Bible and bring an open mind as we start talking about ways, means, methods by which these diseases of Egypt, if we have them, we can reverse them. We can avoid them. We can destroy them by the power, the principles, and the commandment that God's given us in the Word of God. Is that all right? Let's have a word of prayer. Let's thank God. Have, have you learned anything tonight? Yeah. Have some things been made clear that seemed kind of hard before? Do you understand the diseases of Egypt are with us today? And that no matter if you have any of the, mis the diseases we have to we've talked about, there's hope now. There's hope in Jesus. There's hope in the things He's created. There's hope in wisdom and knowledge from the Word that we can be changed. Also, those